Hi there, this is Leonard from Cosmic Sound and welcome to a special feature on studio monitors. Um, we're going to do a bit of a comparison for you today, let you know what sort of things you want to be looking for when you buy a set of studio monitors. Um, I think it's fair to say that any home studio, whether you're uh, recording bands or producing electronic music, um, you're going to need a set of studio monitors. This is one of the most important things you can have in your, in your setup. So we're going to take you through a few things that you want to look for when you buy a set of monitors. And then we're just going to show you a few different sets in each different price bracket. And hopefully then you can make the best decision for yourself. So one very important question to answer first for you is why do I need studio monitors? Um, a lot of people think that they have a great hi-fi or they might be able to listen to the music in their car or even just mix on headphones. Um, studio monitors are a very unique thing. So the speakers you'd have attached to your hi-fi are designed to do one thing, which is color the sound and make it sound good, make it sound better than it is on the recording. A studio monitor, you just want to be very accurate, very clean, and very basically truthful. If there's anything wrong with the mix, it needs to stick out so that you can fix it. Um, the other thing it does is it provides you with an adequate stereo field so that you can pan your sounds from left to right. Um, and this is something that you can't truly achieve with headphones. It's often a good idea to have a set of good headphones there just to reference on, uh, possibly to check your low end as well, depending on your room, whether you get a good um, representation of the bass in your room. Um, but generally speaking, they do have a distorted stereo image, so you do want to check this on a pair of speakers. A set of monitors are a very personal thing. There's not going to be one set of monitors that is necessarily better than another set. It really comes down to you personally and the space that you've got the monitors set up in. Uh, also, the style of music will also dictate uh, which monitors will be better for you. So a couple of things that you're going to want to consider. First thing is the size of the monitor. Now, you usually find them in sizes of 5 inch, 6 inch or 8 inch. You will get the occasional 7 inch or you can get a 4 inch as well um, if that suits your needs. Um, you're really going to want to consider what size space you're in and this will dictate essentially what size monitor will be best for you. If you're in a very small room, it probably doesn't make much sense to have a huge speaker. Um, all it's going to do is uh, bludgeon you in the face with sound. Um, you may find you get a lot of um, reflections and standing waves and such as well. So best to go for a smaller monitor. If you're in a bigger room, if you, if you do have the allowance for a bigger speaker, um, I personally do prefer them, especially if you're a dance music producer. Going for an 8-inch woofer will give you more extended bass um, and just help you to tune in those lower frequencies a little bit more. Um, so essentially, when you go and look for a set of monitors, you're looking for the best you can afford, and this is a case of um, you get what you pay for. The monitors that are $10,000 are obviously a lot better than the monitors that are $500. Um, but basically what you're looking for is the most truthful representation of a sound that you can get for whatever you want to spend. Um, at this point, it's probably an important thing to mention as well that in a home studio context, as well as in a lot of professional studios, the monitors you'll be dealing with are near-field monitors. And this means that they're designed to be right in front of you and pointing at your head. They're no good if they're on the other side of the room. Um, so what you want to do essentially when you set your speakers up is make an equilateral triangle between you and the speakers with the speakers being two points and you being the third point. You can actually measure this out with a tape measure and measure the distance to you to get that right. And another very important thing is getting the height right. As these are very directional speakers, if they're too high, uh, the tweeter will be firing over your head. If, you, if they're too low, you just won't pick up the sound. So the best way to do this, if you can, is to get the tweeter at ear level. And this can mean either getting a desk that can actually get the speakers to the right height, or alternatively, if you don't have a desk that's suitable, get yourself some decent monitor stands. Uh, another important thing, if you can afford to do this, is get yourself some monitor pads. Uh, this will really assist in getting a better sound, and you'll be surprised at how much difference it can make just putting your speakers on a little bit of foam can make. So let's get into looking at a few different monitors now. All of the brands we're showing you here today are reputable companies, so they'll all be good. Uh, just depends on what you want to spend. So we're going to show you some in a few different price brackets, and then you can make up your own mind. So the first one I want to talk about is Behringer. That's these ones here. They make a huge range of monitors, um, starting from very cheap and small up to these ones, which are 8-inch. And they also do a, a range of different products at the 8-inch and 6-inch sizes. Um, they represent really good value for money. So if you're looking for a cheaper set of studio monitors, it's still definitely going to give you um, good response and enable you to do a good mix, then have a look at these ones. Next from here, we'll look at Fostex. So these are the Fostex. They're a reputable company, been around for a very long time. 
um, well known for other products such as reel-to-reel um, -reel tape recorders. Um, they make some really good studio, studio monitors in a range of different sizes. So the ones we've got right here are the 6-inch model. They also do these in a 4, a 5 and an 8. So you'll be able to suit them to whatever size studio you've got. They sound good, give you good representation across the frequency range, um, will enable you to do a good mix. They're not priced too heavily as well, so if you're looking for a reasonably priced set of monitors, it's still going to give you a good sound, um, check these guys out. So the next ones we'll take a look at, look at are KRK. Um, you'll see these under the name Rocket, that's typically what you'll see them um, advertised as. Um, they do a huge range of different models, so these are the 5s, they also come in a 6 and an 8, and there's soon to be a 10 inch, uh, which will be a 3 way, so you'll have a 10 inch um, main driver, there'll be a mid range, which I think is a 4 inch and a 1 inch dome tweeter like you'll have on here, or woven Kevlar cones. Um, the distinctive yellow cone is the way to tell these apart from any of the others, and also you'll notice the curve curvature on the um, outside. Um, they also do a range of higher end studio speakers. If you're looking for anything in the um, more advanced price brackets, they can certainly fill that role as well. Um, these ones are typically favoured by dance music producers and even hip hop producers because they have a very rich low end. Even these little fives will give you a decent kick. So if you're in a smaller room and you, you, uh, only, need to, you only want a smaller speaker, um, KRK is certainly the ones to look at. Um, the 8s give you a lot of punch, so if you want something that's going to give you a very heavy low end, definitely have a look at the 8 inches of the Rockets. So next up, Yamaha. Now this company's made what is the most reputable studio monitor of all time, the NS10. So you'll see these in most professional studios around the world. Even if they have other sets, there's usually a set of NS10s in there. Um, these ones that we do today are a powered range, unlike the NS10s, which were passive. Um, they do look quite similar to the NS10s though, and these are called the HS80s. They also do them in a five inch, um, which is called the HS50, which is a very small speaker. And if you're gonna go that way, probably have a look at the um, HS10 sub as well to go with those. But these are the eights. Um, they're a very, very good speaker in, in the mid-price bracket. Um, tremendous uh, frequency response across the board. They sound very clean, very clear for all styles of music. So if you're looking for a set of really good monitors with bang for buck, definitely check out the Yamaha HS80s. So the next ones we'll take a look at are Event. Uh, this is an Australian company. They've been around for a very long time. They make uh, some great speakers, most notably the Opals, uh, which are actually rated by Future Music Magazine as the best speaker of all time. So the thing with the Opals is they're a very expensive set and they're not something that everyone's going to be able to afford. So fantastically, these ones have come along, um, which are in the mid-price bracket. Um, they still sound fantastic, great frequency response across the board, um, great stereo image. So definitely check out the Event 2020 BAS V3s. So next, let's have a look at Atom. Uh, this is a German company. They make absolutely fantastic speakers. They've become very popular uh, in recent times, mostly because of this thing here, the ribbon tweeter. The idea of this is that you don't get ear fatigue if you're sitting in your studio listening for hours on end. Uh, the ribbon tweeter is supposed to protect your ears and hopefully let you mix for a bit longer. Um, they do a pretty big range of speakers actually, um, starting with the little fives. Um, we've got the seven here, the Atom um, A7X. This actually comes in an eight inch now, which is gonna give you a little bit more low extension. They also do subs, they do midfield monitors. Um, you can see some of the bigger ones here. These are still a near field, um, but you can see they're a three way. Um, very, very powerful speaker, but definitely in the higher end um, price bracket. So if you're looking for some really, really good quality uh, monitors, Atom are definitely one to come in and have a listen to. So finally, let's have a look at Equator. These are the speakers you can see up here. They look quite a bit different to any of the other monitors on here. And the major reason is that the high frequency and low frequency drivers are located in the same spot. So the effect of this is that you have better stereo imaging than probably any of the speakers on the counter at the moment. Um, it also means there's a wider sweet spot, so you can move around in the room and still get uh, quite a distinct stereo image. Whereas with the other speakers, you'll pretty much need to be right in between them at any time. You're also going to get a little bonus with these speakers. Um, they come with some room correction software. Uh, in this, you pretty much plug in the dimensions of your room and it'll adjust the speakers depending on your individual space. Um, there is an optional kit that you can get uh, with a microphone that will automate this process and just make it a little bit easier. Uh, they also come in a range of sizes from 8s right up to 15s, so they'll fit pretty much any studio you might want to put them into. So just to conclude on these, they're a very, very good speaker. High price bracket, but you certainly get what you pay for with these. 
So we've been looking at studio monitors today. We've given you a brief rundown of what you should be looking for when you buy some, as well as showing you a few different products on the market at the moment. As always, we're here to help you at any time, so please um, give us a call or come into store and check these out. You can uh, purchase any of these speakers at either our Osborne Park or Cannington stores or online, so check us out there as well at cosmic.com.au. Thanks a lot for watching.